Hey guys, and welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields, and today I'm going to address the number one piece of advice that I can give any new brewer. A lot of people would think that that is sanitation, and although that's important, I think everybody knows that, right? I mean, you read enough about brewing, you know you need to clean, and you know you need to sanitize, and that's the first thing you hear about is worrying about getting an infection or something like that. So I think most people do a pretty good job uh, of cleaning and sanitizing. And although that's important, my number one piece of advice for new brewers is actually temperature control. So I live in the Carolinas and it gets hot. Uh, it's over 90 plus almost every day in the summer and my garage where I do most of my brewing and even in, in fermenting is hotter in the daytime, probably 85 plus most of the time. Um, even in my house though, even though I keep my uh, thermostat below 70 degrees uh, at my lowest level, gets fairly cool and can keep cool, the temperature inside of your beer is actually warmer. And so it's really important to keep that temperature control, uh, not only in the summer months, but also in the winter months. And so as you may live in a cooler environment, I used to live in Minnesota, your beer can actually get colder than you want it to. Or if you're doing a lager, you really need it to get a lot colder than what you can do just in a living space inside of your house. And so I recommend most people looking into getting or making a fermentation chamber. And so this is my fermentation chamber. I actually use uh, an old smaller chest freezer and we're gonna be going through the uh, the, it today um, and what all is needed to turn this into a fermentation chamber to hold temperature control, not only for keeping it cold, but also for keeping it warm in the cooler months when it may be below freezing outside and my garage space gets colder than I'd like it to be for fermentation. So with that said, I'm gonna break down each of the components that I have in my fermentation chamber and show you how I set it up uh, for both ales and, and lagers. All right, so my fermentation chamber, again, just a, a chest freezer, an old chest freezer. Um, I actually used to use this for food and we ended up upgrading, getting a bigger one, and I was able to convert this into my fermentation chamber and I'll show you how to do that. But um, you can also just get one of these online, uh, for like Facebook Marketplace or a garage sale site or you know wherever, maybe your friend has an old one they don't use. And it doesn't have to be anything pretty. It really just needs to work uh, and be able to cool things down. So let's talk about how to turn this in from just a freezer into something that's gonna keep temperatures in the mid 60s or even lower for a, a lager temperature. And what you need, what the main thing you're gonna need to have for that is uh, what the uh, temperature controller like this Inkbird uh, temperature gauge right here. And what this does is it actually has a plug-in that goes into the wall right there. And then it has a, uh, a plug in here, one for cooling, which is where the freezer bits plugged into, and then one for heating. And then this smaller cord here is actually a thermostat that goes inside of the back here through just the uh, uh, through just the top, um, and then goes in here. And you would actually attach that temperature probe here uh, that's laying on the bottom there to the side of your carboy when it's inside, or your bottling but or your bucket, whichever you have. Um, I also have into the heating element this lamp and this lamp isn't just a uh, with a standard bulb in it. I actually use uh, just a, a reptile lamp. This is a ceramic um, light that just screws into a regular light bulb uh, housing like this one and it actually heats up and it's meant for like lizards and things that you might get at a pet store and so you can buy those right at a pet store but that actually helps keep it from getting too cold. And so uh, when, when the uh, freezer kicks on, it kicks on uh, and the temperature gauge tells it when to kick on the cool or kick on the heat, depending on what temperature I'm, set, I'm setting this to. And so you can get one of these on Amazon. I think they're right around 30 bucks or something like that for, a, for one of these Inkbird um, temperature controllers. And then um, the... Uh, lamp, I believe I got this from the pet store. I think that ceramic bulb was about 20, 25. You can just use a regular bulb, but you want to uh, avoid having extra light onto your beer, right? So um, this won't admit any light having the reptile uh, bulb in there. And so that's why I use that. Another thing that I like to put in here is uh, this dehydrator. And what this does um, or excuse me, humidifier rather. And what this does, uh, it's an Evadry uh, humidifier for high capacity. I think it's an Evadry 500 or something like that. 
Um, and what this does is it actually takes the moisture out of the fermentation chamber and it stores it in those little beads inside. And so you can see that they have uh, kind of little orangish beads. And when they turn wet, they actually turn to a darker color, like it says wet and dry on there. Then when this gets full, you can actually take this plug in and you um, plug it in and it heats up and dries out and then you can reuse it over and over. So I don't keep this in all the time. I'm just using it in here for this demonstration. But then I once it's dry, I store this until I brew again. I put this back in here because what happens a lot of times is from the heating and cooling, and then you've got beer bubbling in here, uh, uh, the fermentation action going through the airlock, and there's some moisture that can build up on the walls. And so you really just want to have something that's going to control that. Um, sometimes I have a, a blow-off tube going into sanitizer, and so there's moisture just um, getting into this thing. And so that's why I use that uh, inside here just to make sure that it stays nice and dry. So that's the few simple things that you'll need to get yourself a fermentation chamber up and running. I like to also keep this running when I'm not using it for fermenting a beer, like it isn't right now. And that's because the, the coils and, and the compressor can actually dry out and cause the, the, uh, um, the coils to leak over time. And so if it's always working a little bit, even if you have it at just a, a higher temperature and it's kicking on every once in a while, it's just keeping the system moving and it's not allowing those O-rings and things to dry out. So you don't want to let it just sit there for months at a time. So I do let it uh, leave it plugged in. Not super necessary, but I have heard others have issues with that and then, um, then it doesn't hold uh, the uh, refrigerant as long. And so I would definitely recommend getting one of those. Um, it also helps after your brew day and you're waiting for your te temperature to get down to pitching temp. Say you uh, use your immersion chiller and you get it down, but it's not quite down enough to get to your pitching temp. A lot of people are tempted to just pitch their yeast early and that can really stress out your yeast and, and uh, uh, if you pitch it at too high of a temperature. So it's, it's okay to actually leave it in this fermentation chamber for a while, let it actually cool down to the appropriate temperature, and then pitch your yeast, shake it real good, or use an aerator, and then uh, uh, let it go. Um, the other thing uh, about this is that it really can hone in the exact temperature you want. So I always keep mine set between uh, plus and minus two degrees. So I don't let it really go very far from my target uh, fermentation temperature. And when I put that probe on the side of the carboy or the bucket, um, I actually just stick it, uh, mine's got a harness on it, so I stick it between the harness touching right on the glass carboy. But you could actually tape, some people use kind of a damp sponge or, uh, or a cloth, and you can just tape that right to the side of the bucket too. So that works just, just as well. But that'll help keep that temperature spot on all the time. And so uh, don't put it, that temperature gauge inside of your beer because what's gonna happen is it's gonna wait for the swing of the beer and, the, and then the, the, uh, either the heat lamp or the refrigerator will, or the uh, freezer will turn on too long and it can actually melt stuff in there if that can gets too hot or too cold. And so that temperature gauge is meant to be outside of your fermentation chamber or your uh, fermenter. And so that'll help keep it within that one to two, to, to, uh, one to two degree temperature right in the middle of your fermentation range. And so each one of your yeast packets is going to have a temperature range on it. And you really want to aim, you know, probably uh, somewhere in the middle, but I like to err on the side of colder rather than hotter, depending on the yeast. But some of them have an optimum temperature range and then they have a wider range and you really don't want to get towards the edges of those, of those wider ranges because then you can get off flavors or it will take longer to ferment if it's on the colder side. Um, and then obviously with lagers they need to be at a much lower temperature anyway to ferment and something like this is necessary. I know some people use um, swamp chambers and they put ice and stuff in there and put ice baths but by the time you're spending the time and money on ice and, and switching all that over um, and it also doesn't keep it quite as regulated as having something like this. I think most people could find a used chest freezer online for fairly inexpensive. Even a new one at this size is about a hundred bucks at most places. And so um, I really recommend, I think for under a hundred dollars, you can get a used one, the temperature controller and the heat uh, and have it ready to go for your next brew. So the number one rule in home brewing to make better beer, temperature control. Happy brewing everybody. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.